Welcome back everyone to an Age of Sigmar 4th edition video. We finally saw some War Scrolls, so today's video is going to be about breaking down that information from yesterday's community post. And at the end, if you stick around, I'll share some information about my own thoughts about all of this exciting news. We're even going to compare some of the old War Scrolls to the new ones. With the new edition of Age of Sigmar, the claim is that everything a unit can do from moving and fighting and using spells they're all going to be abilities and these are going to be clearly labeled. They're going to be color coded. They're going to be symbol coded to demonstrate exactly which phase of the game that ability is used in. So this is all going to be visible in the war scroll. And we're going to take a look at some of those sample war scrolls. Now, let's start by talking about the Stormcast Eternals Liberator war scroll that they showed us. So move is unchanged, save is unchanged and wounds has been renamed to health. And instead of the bravery score, it's just totally gone. We knew that battle shock was gone. We didn't know bravery was going to be gone. We now have control and this replaces bravery. It functions as a measure of how a unit is able to hold objectives. So the control score is the sum of the characteristic from all the models in the unit that are contesting the objective. So for many models, they're going to have a control score of one, which means they don't really change how they worked from third to fourth edition. However, this makes it super clear so that you know exactly how to count up how much control you actually have on an objective. And I actually like this a lot. Personally, as a new player, it was kind of confusing that you had to think about, is this a monster? Does it have five or more wounds? You know, does it have five or less wounds? Whatever, whatever it was, uh, this is just way simpler. It also opens up some design space for a games workshop to make some really clearly control oriented units and there's more battlefield rules i guess uh, because you can just take a look at the face value of a war scroll and you can say this is a control unit so what's actually new on this war scroll well we can see one of the new universal weapon abilities which is crit mortal and that means that an unmodified hit roll of six will count as a critical hit and that turns critical hits into mortal damage. So we already knew that sixes always hit, but now if you have this crit mortal, when you do crit, you'll do your mortal wounds. And it doesn't actually say whether, you know, it's one mortal wound or whatever. So it's gonna be the damage of the weapon, which means if you have the great hammer that you'll do two mortal wounds if you crit with this unit. So the keywords in the bottom are also split up now. We have gameplay keywords, and then below that we have the general keywords. And this is, the idea is that you make your gameplay focused keywords more easily visible. And this is really important because there's some stuff that has been moved down into keywords that we'll talk about later. So all the weapon stat functions the same way uh, but all weapons have been rebalanced in 4th edition. This is what they've they've claimed uh, to better reflect each unit's miniature, their lore, and their battlefield role. So melee weapons all have a 3-inch range now, and all models will just have that. That's just going to be across the board. Now, here's something really interesting that they've just kind of slid in there. Missile weapons have had their range generally, generally reduced. That's from That's verbatim from the article. So missile weapons range is getting nerfed. We have to wait and see more information about that. So the abilities on this war scroll are color coded. They're symbol coded. The passive abilities are automatic and you don't have to use them or cast them. They just happen in those phases. And you have to remember to tell your opponent, hey, my passive ability is now taking effect. So let's take a look at the new color coding system. So we can see that the turn phases are all color coded. Black means start of the turn. Gold means hero phase. Silver is movement phase. Blue or turquoise-ish is shooting phase. Orange is the charge phase. Red is the combat phase. And purple is end of turn. So if an ability happens in one of those phases, it will have that color on the war scroll ability for it or in the book, uh, I guess, when we see the spell lures. We also have ability icons. So we have an arrow for the movement ability. We have a sword and hammer for an offensive ability, a shield with a twin-tailed comet for the defensive ability, a bow and arrow for the shooting abilities, a flag for any sort of rallying abilities. I guess there's gonna be more than one way to rally or different ways. That makes sense. There's lots of armies with recursion. And then we have uh, a little kind of sun for special abilities and a filled in circle for uh, control abilities. So that's quite a bit of tags there, but really if you're starting to be a little bit worried, when you start playing with this type of a system, 
you will just kind of get it over time. Like it's gonna build up into your memory. You don't have to worry about knowing this all right away. Down the line, it is gonna make things simpler, but you have to give it some time for some uptake. So we can also look at the old Liberator War Scroll and compare it to the new one. And we see that we still have two wounds. We still have five inch move on the new scroll. However, the new scroll has a three plus save rather than a four plus. It doesn't mess around with whether you build them with shields or not, because you can't in this new version. Uh, it, you can't build a more defensive unit. You just get a three up save, which is ultimately a big buff for these liberators uh, because they're still going to have the offensive firepower. Uh, the new war scroll doesn't get three attacks any anymore, but it also has a improved to wound score on its default Warhammer weapon compared to the old one. There's also no lay low the tyrant's ability and instead the liberator just has more objective contesting power with its new ability. So I'm kind of curious, can we expect these types of objective based abilities to come out on all of our infantry tagged units because this is an infantry unit they're kind of your rank and file taking over objectives. Maybe that's going to be a really common th uh, theme that we see rather than damaging abilities, although they do have crit mortal. So is this war scroll actually better? Is it worse? I think overall it is better. I think it's certainly simpler for the new player to get, you know, get their, get the hang of it. And it's definitely smoother in gameplay without having to worry about as many things to do because you, you know, you don't have to worry, do I have enough models for the shield bonus? I have to figure out, you know, oh, can I do this mortal uh, wounds ability? No, it's just all going to happen while you attack. You might deal some mortal wounds. You're going to be able to wound more easily because of the improved score. You're going to be able to save better because of the improved save. It's overall just looks like a buffed war scroll for this model. I also think that the crit mortal uh, ability looks really good. It could be super powerful if you reinforce this model because or this unit because then all of a sudden you have a lot of rolls when it's your turn to attack with i noticed that it doesn't specify the damage like i said so if you crit mortal with the grand hammer then that's two damage so that can be really really powerful uh really quickly there's also no point cost on this war scroll because they mentioned that's going to be living in a separate document website pdf going forward so you will not see that anywhere on the war scroll now, if you're enjoying this video and if you like Age of Sigmar content, then please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video and leaving a comment if you are so inclined. Every little bit of support will help this small channel grow and I really appreciate it. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at Nagash's War Scroll, which is a, a lot more complicated than the Liberator one. And so we'll take a look at it overall and then we're going to compare the old one to the new one. So. First of all, there is no more damage table on the new war scroll and stu instead we have a battle damage passive ability which activates at 10 damage points. Wow, we're really not going to say wounds. So this only affects his wizard tag level, not his movement or his invocation cast range. One of his keywords is wizard nine. So we don't really know what that means yet. We have some assumptions. You know, is that how many spells he can cast? Is that going to affect his casting and unbinding modifiers, his spell range? We'll have to wait and find out. But either way, once you've taken 10 damage points, you will go from wizard nine to wizard six, presumably. So Nagash has three golden color uh, coded hero phase abilities. So these are just for the hero phase. The staff of power is a passive. So it always happens in the hero phase. The gameplay keywords for Nagash include fly, and also ward five plus. So uh, ward being a keyword now is definitely a very simple place to put it. And it's really important that it doesn't get bogged down in a huge list of keywords, which is why they split those keywords into gameplay and non-gameplay. So people need to read very carefully not to miss those types of things. And it will probably lead initially to some people being a little bit frustrated finding out something has ward they didn't realize, but I think we're all gonna pick it up pretty quickly. So at this point, you might be asking how has Nagash's War Scroll changed from the current edition of Age of Sigmar? Well, let's take a look at that next. So his health is still 18, his move is still 10 inches, and that will never decrease. His save is still three plus, and he counts for 10 control, which is an increase from his old scroll if you consider how much he actually was able to contest an objective. His rep weapons are the same, but his Alakanash lost one rend. He also lost the Spectral Claws and Daggers companion profile from his War Scroll. It's just less attacks to roll, so it's simplified how he will 
operate in your melee combat. His staff of power had the casting modifier reduced and it doesn't specify unbinding, uh, but we don't really know if that's changed in the new edition. Maybe modifiers are universal. So if you have a spell modifier, it's also your unbinding modifier. That might just be a cleanup in the edition. We don't know yet, but uh, either way, uh, you lost, like it was plus three before, now it's plus two. However, if you were to miscast, you would no longer lose the ability to continue casting, but you would lose your modifying bonus. The Invocation of Nagash is a spell that now must be cast. It's not just a passive thing that he does every turn, but it can be cast multiple times. And if he can cast nine spells per turn, then he could cast this nine times if he wanted to. It still returns models if they have been slain, but it can't heal them anymore uh, if none are slain. And it can give the five uh, ward to units. It can also now damage enemies, which will be a D3 mortal wounds. And what they've done is they've taken basically this ability and then some of his other war scroll components and they've put it all into one spell with some different variability of how you can play this. Now the casting success value is not listed on here unless I missed it. So I'm wondering, is it related to his wizard level? Does that mean that spells are simplified where they all have the same casting levels uh, and it just depends on your wizard level? What does that mean for power levels in terms of spells? Or maybe certain spells can only be cast by, you know, certain wizard levels. I don't know. This is something that overall, this whole wizard nine thing and how spells work, I know they're going to talk to us about it at some point, but it felt really weird not to mention it in this article. If they're going to go ahead and show one of the biggest spell casters in the actual game. Okay, so you cannot choose the same target for this spell, so you can't just, you know, keep resurrecting on one unit or keep mortal wounding another enemy unit. You have to divvy it up for your nine casts if you're going to use all nine. Otherwise, we've lost the Ward 5 aura for friendly death units. That's just not on the war scroll anymore. You have to give it to people using the evocation spell. So he just lost a bit of passive support for his entire army. The Supreme Lord of Undead is a once per battle ability now, uh, but no role is needed anymore. So you just get to use it. It has no restrictions on unit size or health. It just says it can't be a hero or a unique unit. And that unit can be resurrected and it can be placed and moved right away in the movement phase. So all of a sudden you have a way more powerful or ability but it only can be used the one time per the entire battle. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. Less restrictions, but way more power and usability. We also have Hand of Dust that's still on the War Scroll. It only works on heroes and monsters now, and Nagash, Nagash must be in combat with them, which is technically the same as before because they had to be within three uh, inches anyway. Uh, but this ability is automatic now. It just happens at the end of the turn. So you've gone through your combat, uh, and then you go into that end of turn phase, and then the Hand of Dust will happen. Uh, so it, it opens up some counterplay here where if you get your infantry uh, in between uh, Nagash and your heroes and your unique, like, you know, whatever, then he can't really hand of dust them. That's going to be really important. There's also no so uh, soul stealer spell on his war scroll anymore. Instead, it's built into the invocation of Nagash spell. And really what this all leads to is his war scroll has been simplified a lot. His abilities read way faster and take way less time to navigate. It feels like Passively, he does way less now. And, you know, there's no ward. There's no passive invocation of Nagash to resurrect things or heal things. Uh, you're going to want to throw Nagash into combat with monsters and heroes to try and use this, you know, hand of death ability. But that's risky at the same time because you don't want to lose, you know, your big massive hero here, right? So, uh, I mean, I guess get ready to cast invocation of Nagash a bunch of times each well, on your turn, on your specific hero phase, so that you can raise your dead and still have that like necromancer powers. So I actually don't know if this war scroll is better or worse because I am very new to actually playing the game. It feels worse in some ways for sure, but some things did improve in terms of, you know, uh, that once per battle resurrection is super potent, uh, but overall it seems like he lost uh, just a lot of like, he just has to be out. And then you can be casting a bunch of other things on your turn before. Now to get the same effects he had before, he has to repeatedly cast that. So, you know, I'm tuned into the game to make a definitive decision on and whether this is better or worse, but it seems worse to me based on kind of uh, what I can 
can read on these war scrolls. But now it's time to discuss my own thoughts on this article. And I'm very curious, I'm most curious about how casting will work. What is a successful role? What does a wizard level mean? These are really big questions that were unanswered. And I really hope that it's just as simple as they're coming this week and we're gonna find out and we can make a video about it. Otherwise, I'm also very curious about shooting getting nerfed because they said that ranges were generally coming down with, with you know, their, that was in their own words. And I want an example of that ASAP, okay? Because people don't like shooting, but people also love shooting. People love to shoot. They just don't love to be shot at. It kind of makes sense, okay? The war scrolls are demonstrably simpler now. Like, Nagash has way less text. He's still very complex, but it's undeniable that his overall complexity has dropped and it's it's just a fact i'm not you know still in a, in a great position to say whether that's that's good or bad overall it seems fine because there still seems like there's still so much you can do with him and the game is still gonna be really cool and fun uh but for experienced play players you're gonna have to let me know what you think about that drop in complexity they said that next week we're gonna get more information on moving and fighting and i'm not really sure what might have changed for these phases but i hope that they include the shooting when they talk about fighting because again i'm so very curious about that we also saw that champion is a keyword now but we don't have any explanation of what that keyword does so we saw that the champion can't have their weapon modified champion keyword probably is something like if your unit has a champion keyword add one to the attacks of its basic weapon or something like that's probably going to be what champion is but we don't actually know that again pretty important information to leave out like they went through the the trouble of showing us the war scroll and talking about how some of these new things are going to be coming into play they talked about the ability the passive ability crit mortal so they should have just put a quick little line of hey champions one of our new keywords and uh, you know this is how it operates for all units and all armies and all factions when they have a champion it does x right we could have seen that i mean that's pretty much all my thoughts and i'd love to hear what you think about this article and these this news has been released otherwise i'm gonna get out of here bye